Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I'm about to ruin the KB2, at least according to some people inside Twitch chat. And that is that you can see that I'm having a dilemma at the start of the game. Do I want to use vents and aiming device and a gun rammer, or do I want to use vents and aiming device and a binoculars? And you can see that I'm switching just right up until the last few seconds. And it looks like I'm going to decide to use the gun rammer, but literally with one second less, I decide to use binoculars. Now, unfortunately, in this replay, binoculars are bugs. And they're showing that I've, they're working on the move, even though that's not what they should be doing. I definitely don't have max view range unless I'm sitting still. So keep that in mind for this replay, that until you hear that, the stunk of the binoculars being finally set up after sitting still for, is it five seconds? that I'm not going to have decent enough view range. Now, I was confident confident enough in this game that the binoculars were going to become useful that I was willing to sacrifice the gun rammer for them. And we're kind of going old school World of Tanks here. If any of you played World of Tanks since the beginning, you'll know that back in the day, there were so many more camionettes used, so many more binoculars used, and there were so many more also toolkits used, because those were the three pieces of equipment that you could actually demount for free. That's right, you didn't need to have Watplus to demount your equipment back in the day, and so lots of people took binoculars on a lot of their vehicles, because it was a lot cheaper than having coated optics, for example, dedicated on all of your tanks. And also, back in the day, there weren't crew skills like Brothers in Arms, Recon, and Situational Awareness. Originally, there were only three crew skills in the game. That was Repairs, Firefighting, and Concealment. And so, you didn't have all of that extra view range. Not to mention, as well, field mods, especially for heavy tanks, just increase your view range pretty much by 3%. And so, everyone lacked view range back in the day. And so, binoculars are perfect because they increase your view range by 25% allowing you to be able to see your opponents at greater distances, even without a premium consumable like I wasn't using. And so really, the only way to actually be able to spot your opponents back in the day was through binoculars. Of course, some tanks, if they had really good view range towards the top tier, or if you're playing a light tank, could get away with coated optics instead. However, um, yeah, as, as I was saying, back in the day, not many vehicles actually could manage that. And considering that you could demount the binoculars for free, they were actually, for a while, the first thing that I would recommend any new player to get inside World of Tanks. You had to grind, I think it was... I think the binoculars used to cost 500,000 credits. And it was brutal, because once you actually managed to get them, or at least a couple of pairs of them, then you could demount them and put them on all of your vehicles and kind of actually be useful. But before then, the vision game was just so weird in World of Tanks, where everybody just couldn't see each other. Uh, of course, unless you took the binoculars. And yeah, being able to see your opponents is kind of useful because if you can see them and they can't see you, especially while you're shooting, and you're not playing an E25 like in my last video, for example, then it's a lot easier to win, right? Okay, so we're going to come around the corner really slowly here. We have an armor-piercing round loaded, which is a premium round, and it will overmatch the whole of that 45 millimeters of side armor on the Rudy. And the premium rounds on this tank, 136 millimeters of pen and 700 alpha damage. Now, they're not high explosive. They're not as cheap as high explosive. The HE rounds on this tank only cost 700. And if you can pen them, they do 910. But with 86 mils of pen, that's not the hardest thing to do at low tier. But when you get yourself into a matchup like this, where you're having to deal with a lot of equal and higher tier tanks, then quite often these armor piercing rounds can actually really pay off and penetrate targets that the HE rounds couldn't even dream of. And that's really the speciality of the KV2, right? Just provide a stupid amount of punishment. And on a map like this, this is a very unusual map. A lot of you might not have even seen it exists in the game, especially if you don't play below tier 7. Province. Um, this is a map that is quite old inside World Tanks. Not exceptionally old, but it did have some really quirky things. And that is that this used to be a tier 10 map. You used to be able to play it all the way up until tanks like the mouse, right? And that was crazy because the map used to be so much smaller. This map was so ill-conceived by Wargaming when it was first released that actually some tanks, I believe, were spotted before the countdown timer finished. And so they would all get just obliterated right at the beginning. Or at least, even if they weren't spotted right at the beginning, the first, like, 50 meters or 100 meters that a light tank drove towards the enemy team a lot of them would get lit up. And so it was this, like, feverish 
scurry at the start of the battle to try and actually get into cover to avoid being basically spawn shop. Considering how many players are usually AFK, oh my goodness gracious, KB2, you are, even with the vents and the aiming device, your accuracy is still horrendous. I've even got the field mod on this vehicle, and but this 0.6 accuracy is rearing its ugly head right now. So it's kind of like this. Yeah, considering how many people are usually AFK at the start of the game, this map back in the day used to be an absolute farm for a lot of light tanks. Come on, third time's the charm. There we go. Right into the side of the M10 RBFM. And really in that situation, I should have gone for the HE round, not for the armor piercing round. Okay, so having destroyed one vehicle and over a thousand damage now, it looks like we're actually losing the West. And this is why I took the binoculars on this map that maybe later on in this battle, if we continue to lose the West, the only way that we're going to be able to get spots on our opponents is to be able to hit them. And actually, you can see that the view range is now fixed, which is nice. So you can see what my view range would be like if I wasn't taking coated optics or I wasn't taking binoculars on this tank. But getting up to kind of like the 450 meters view range with binoculars on this vehicle, it's for a tank like this, I feel like it's a really nice second build. Otherwise, what are you going to take on your second build on this vehicle? I feel like uh, the all-purpose damagey build on this tank is going to be maybe a gun rammer with vents and an aiming device for ultimate accuracy and firepower. But to be able to take the binoculars as like a second build uh, really does provide you a lot of flexibility on maps where it's more about spotting and sniping. Because I don't really feel like you need the rotation device or a turbo um, because you've already got your ultimate damage dealing build. So might as well have something that allows you to engage in these long distance affairs. So that was a really weird engagement against the IS-2S. I couldn't penetrate my armor piercing round, so I intuition switched out to HE. Um, but unfortunately, with that thick armor, I wasn't able to go through it. But still, 221 damage is decent indeed. Alrighty then, so ladies and gents, boys and girls, unfortunately, as the West Falls, it is now going to be me and a Black Prince, who I feverishly take the opportunity to say, Black Prince, I have binos. I can spot for us. Great. Well, they're in the cap circle and I'm not managing to really spot much now. It is me and a Black Prince versus six tanks on the enemy team. We've got another two versus six. Quacky baby, they seem to be happening a lot. And I honestly don't know how I took no damage as I went down that slope. Just Soviet things, right? Just Soviet things. Okay, this is a little awkward because I have to sit still to activate my binoculars. But I don't have good camera rating on this tank. But here we go. I'm out spotting a Chi Re at long range. Beautiful stuff. Able to finish off the higher tier Japanese medium. And there we go. Our 2 versus 6 is now down to a 2 versus 5. And the enemy leave the cap circle. But knocking a tree as you leave down the cap circle is kind of a little bit sus. I'm going to load an armor piercing round here for the back of the VK. And this should be 700 hit points that he's not going to get back. Oh yeah. And a fire as well. Automatic fire extinguisher saves that player. And I'm getting nailed by the Panzer IV-H who's across the way. Luckily for me, uh, Bismarenko there playing in their Black Prince finishes off the VK so we don't need to worry about them. Now, I don't want to allow my opponents to get too close to me. Sounds a bit weird in a KV-2. The KV-2 is usually the perfect tank that uh, you want your opponents to come after you, right? But that is definitely not the case here because we can actually outspot them or at least hope that we're going to outspot them. Now, if the enemies had good view range and they had coated optics and so on and so forth, remember that just because I've got enough view range now in the uh, KV-2 definitely doesn't mean that I have enough uh, camo rating. So I've still got to be careful. But honestly, if they fire at me and I've got my binoculars activated, I am most likely going to spot them as well as their camo rating will go down to a point where it doesn't matter and they won't have the drop on me anymore. Okay, so the Black Prince goes around the corner against uh, pretty much full health tier 7. Polish heavy tank. I come around the corner getting spot by the Panzer IV and this 45 TP just wants to ignore the Black Prince and shoot me. However, I'm just going to let the Black Prince farm. There you go. How many shots does the 45 TP have to take? Apparently two. Apparently two was too many shots to take for free from the Black Prince as they then turn their armor towards the tier 7 British heavy tank but expose their side armor towards me and you don't want to expose your side armor towards a KV-2 as we penetrate yet another shot killing yet another higher tier tank and pushing our damage total to a very respectable 3,300. But it's really the binoculars here and not the gun rammer that has paid off. A tank like this, it's, it's dubious about whether you even really need the kind of a gun rammer in this kind of a situation. Of course you do for those kind of close quarter situations where you want to get multiple shots off, but for this, oh man, the binoculars allow us to spot the Panzer IV and boom, there we go. 
Now the two versus six is a two versus two, and this is looking like we have changed it completely into our team's favor. And with big boy shots like this in a KV2, you don't need too many hits to be able to turn it into your team's favor. And Bismarenko finishes off the Wolverine, who I guess was coming to try and spot us, or alternatively, was just trying to make a flanking play. And wow, here we go, eight kills between the last two tanks standing. I sat still there for a second to see if I could be able to catch a glimpse of the VK3002M. Unable to do so. And this is honestly the only awkward thing about binoculars. This is making me have flashbacks to back in the day. We used to have to sit still so often in bushes. You'd move to a bush, sit still, see if you spot. Then move to another bush, sit still, see if you spot. It's, it, it seems to be kind of a gameplay that's out of the game these days. No one really thinks about it, but this used to be what World of Tanks was. And it was such a luxury to use coated optics. Now, when I'm playing on my free-to-play account, this is still a reality. Because most of the tanks that I play as I'm grinding up the tech tree don't have field mods. Don't have the increased view range like you get on tank destroyers and heavy tanks. And uh, I don't have a premium consumable. I never use any premium consumables on my free-to-play account. So I'm missing that 5% view range there that usually pushes you up into the level where you can have enough view range with coated optics. And let alone that not all of my crews on my free-to-play account are perfect, quite often missing recon and situational awareness. And it's really one of the best pay-to-win luxuries in World of Tanks from a premium consumable and from having good crews is that you just get enough to not actually have to sit still. And just that sitting still slows you down so much. It maybe can stop you from being able to catch your opponents uh, because you have to stop and you can't catch up with them. Or alternatively, it stops you from being able to drive into a bush, pull back behind the bush and fire because it's not, it, it's pretty obvious when you drive into a bush, sit still for five seconds, their sixth sense goes off, then you pull back behind the bush and you fire. And sometimes you've only got a matter of seconds to be able to deal with your opponents. Okay, so in this situation, we don't know where the VK is. This game has been going on for 12 minutes. But we're going to have to start to camp. Because the sirens are going to be going off in a minute. And it will take me a minute and 40 seconds to be able to camp. And I'm hoping that the Black Prince will come and join me. Because if the, the VK gets above us, there are lots of opportunities. And talk about being above us. Look where this player has been sitting the whole game. Okay, here we go. I didn't quite fire there. I probably should have taken the chance, but I was hoping that maybe they were just going to drive out in front of us. Luckily, uh, the Black Prince is going to, aka Bismarenko, has got them down to a point where they can be able to get a shot. I'm asking Bismarenko to come and cover me because I'm, I'm really concerned right now that if the Black Prince dies by some means from the VK302M, I'm going to be in an awkward situation where the VK could probably interrupt the cap circle from the bushes. But Bismarenko's just holding fast, showing that British upper lip, you know, the stiff upper lip, and manages to finish off the VK. And we take down a two versus six scenario. So big shout out to you, Bismarenko, in your unpainted black prince. And this, this freak of a KV-2 who's decided to forego the gun rammer to be able to use binoculars. But at least on this map and matchup, Boy, did it really pay off. This isn't something weird. This isn't really something new. Even though Twitch chat thought that I was pretty much ruining my KV2 by doing this. As I got a bit of inspiration from Mayor PBC that you might remember was featured on this channel last November in a video that was called Not the KV2. Where Mayor PBC not only used the 107mm caliber gun, they also used coated optics and they went on in the battle to pick up their third mark of excellence. And it makes you think that when you have the luxury of having two sets of equipment, that quite often it's worth diversifying them so you can fit into different battles and different situations. And the result is an ace tanker here with 1,599 base experience, enough to smash a huge ace tanker for this vehicle, and we get a high caliber as well for our 3,600 damage. And while I did fire a bunch of gold rounds here, we still make 43,000 credits profit and would have even made profit without a premium account. So the good old KV-2, there's nothing quite like it for punishing your opponents. And while people on the stream were definitely telling me I ruined it here by not taking a gun rammer, it looks like we were able to have the last laugh. And with a big gun like this, yeah, he who laughs last, laughs hardest.
Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Sunday, it's time for the World of Tanks Tech Tree Showcase live on twitch.tv forward slash quickiebaby. And this week, I'm going to be featuring the IS-7. So come along if you want to see one of the original tier 10 lines in World of Tanks that pretty much this day still keeps slapping. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.